Hi, this is Scott with Midwest Cam. In this video, we're going to see why Esprit is quick for programming your Swiss parts. I'm going to do this by actually showing you how to program a Swiss part in Esprit. Some of the things that you'll see in this video are the usage of Esprit templates, saved processes, and some of the new features in Esprit 2014. I'll be programming this part as though I were a typical Esprit user and I'll just be explaining things as I go along. So let's get started. We'll start by opening up an Esprit template and we're going to program this part on a star SR32J with the magic guide bushing. So we'll open up my Esprit template for that. And in my template, I already have the tools loaded. Um, and the proper station, let's start the simulation here. You can see uh, the tools and all the correct stations. If you want to learn more about uh, any of the items that I kind of gloss over, like the templates and some of the, uh, the saved processes, there are plenty of videos on YouTube, um, and I'll be making more uh, videos in the future. So here's my template. Let's simply open up our part. And this is a, an inventor, uh, an Autodesk inventor part, and we'll merge that here into my Esprit template. Okay, so here's my part. Let's put these dialog boxes over here. And let's take a quick examination of the part. If we uh, go to the solids tab here and pick uh, an outside face, we can see the diameter. Uh, we'll pick uh, this face here we can check out the uh, the length of the part um, diameter of these cross holes you know, kind of get an overview of uh, what, what we're dealing with for our processing on this part so based on the diameter of the part I'm going to go to my machine setup and we're going to change our uh, bar diameter to something a little more appropriate and I want to process this with this face um, first um, sticking out a main spindle. So we're going to select that face and orient that part this way. So this is a, a star Swiss machine so our uh, main spindle and, and game working turret is over here. And change my active layer and we're going to use another new Esprit 2014 feature, uh, the turning feature recognition. Okay, if I turn off my layer with the part on it, we can see that we've got all of our features for our machining automatically created um, from the turning features add-in. All right, let's do something here for our Swiss machine. We're going to change all of these um, features to the YZX work coordinate. We don't need the G55 and the G54 uh, for our Swiss turning. And then let's rename our features just to be um, consistent. Okay, I left a couple of features here um, unnamed because we're going to uh, do a couple of things with that. We don't need this um, back drilling hole because we're going to drill everything straight through from the face of the part and we're going to take um, this back ID chamfer feature here because what I'm planning on doing is in the sub spindle coming down and cutting this face and coming across center and picking up the chamfer here with the same tool so we're going to make that um, feature symmetrical across the center of the part and we don't need this feature so we can get rid of that. I'm using this feature for the cutoff operation so what I'm going to do is select these two features and we're going to derive the geometry from those two features. You see here's my geometry and we're just going to auto chain that geometry. Okay so we can see we've got this feature let's rename this to um, back face. So I now have my features that I need for machine. Okay, let's get started on our programming. Let's pick the uh, the facing feature 
and we'll go to our um, contouring operation and we're going to open up a um, a face turn operation now when I save this face turn operation it was on a different part I was using a different tool so I need to select the tool that I'm using uh, in this uh, particular setup and uh, we'll click OK alright so there's our facing operation automatically created um, right here uh, we'll grab the OD feature go to contouring again and we'll open up a save process up for OD turning again select the tool and let's click OK now we can see this toolpath here is not exactly what I'm looking for uh, to run this part um, the save process that I had um, was a different type of part so let's make a couple of changes that we need let's see the first thing I want to do is not do any undercutting so we don't drop down into these grooves let's make sure we have cutter comp on and then on our lead in here let's make this a, a tangent lead in and our edge break here let's make that a little smaller and extend um, put a little extension on the back here I also want to extend my whole toolpath back beyond the end of the feature here so let's go up here to our end extension and add uh, an eighth of an inch so we're cutting past to where our uh, cutoff tool will come in okay so let's go to our grooving we'll select both of our grooving operations and I'm going to select uh, grooving and this is already set up because of a previous part or practicing this part before this is has exactly the operation already saved in a spree even though uh, I've closed down a spree and opened it, opened it back up again the set last time I did a grooving operation this is exactly how it was set so this is exactly what I want so there's our grooving let's select our um, p-top or hole feature for doing our drilling and we'll open up a saved process for my center drilling and let's pick the tool that I need for that check my feeds and speeds that will probably be okay and let's check our depth yep that 900 thousandths was probably just fine and uh, we'll click OK so there's our center drilling operation then we'll pick our ID feature go back up to contouring and open up a turn ID save process that I have let's go make sure I've got the right tool front boring tool and when we're done with this contour we want to make sure that we come out a couple hundred thousandths in front of the part uh, let's use cutter comp on this and my lead in move here again let's make that a tangent and on our lead out let's make this a normal and then a tangent so we'll come a little bit past that uh, chamfer here feet off and then again our exit mode is going to pull straight out in the Z so there's our ID term so at this point I'm going to take a look at my operations we can see this is the order that they're going to run okay and let's um, run our simulation so I'm just going to hit pause here so we can zoom out a little bit and actually see our uh, our machine run slow our simulation down a little bit and just kind of get an idea okay now at this point one of the things I may do let's pause our simulation is just turn off you know visibility of the machine and just watch what we have for our turning operation here so there's our turn our grooving let's take a little cross section here okay looks good so far comes out uh, stock pushes out to uh, the front facing tools so it can do the drilling and the ID turn so it looks good at this point okay let's take a look at our model here so we've got really all the basic turning stuff done um, from the main spindle but we need to uh, do our cross drilling on our holes so I'm going to create a hole feature 
just manage, manually select one of these holes. And we can see we've got a, uh, a p-top feature here. And I need to reverse that to make sure that uh, we're actually coming from the outside in, since that's a through hole. Um, confirm that. So we're good with that. And that's a 48 thousandths diameter hole. Now, one of the things that I like to do, especially with cross drilling on lathe parts, is to do a little spiral operation uh, before we spot drill and drill so we have a nice flat for those tools so they don't lead off any. So we're just going to use this feature that we created and we're going to create a, a spiral milling operation. I have a process saved for that cross holes prep spiral mill and yep, make sure we have our tool selected and we should just be able to click OK when we zoom in here we can see we've got a little spiral milling operation putting a flat just into uh, this OD of this groove here. Okay, And let's now select our uh, p-top again and do a drilling operation for our spot drilling. So let's go cross spot drill mains, the name of that feature that I saved. Remember you can name your saved processes anything that you want. Those are just some of the names I picked out as I was creating them. Okay, so we've spiral milled, we've spot drilled. Let's go in and drill it to size. Um, cross drill. Don't want that tool. I want the 40 thousandths drill. The main spindle. Um, let's check our system defaults, pull the actual value of that hole out. Let's go a little deeper than that. Let's go about 95. Um, and let's put a, a dwell at the bottom. So we drill, dwell, come back out again. Okay, the last thing on this hole is this chamfer face right here. Now we could just go in and spot drill it, but since this is on a cylindrical um, surface, you get kind of funny shaped, you know, oval or elliptical um, chamfers when you do that uh, with just a spot drill. So what I'm going to do, and I do this a lot on uh, OD chamfered holes, is we're just going to select um, this edge right here, and we're going to put a feature on here. So let me rename this and call it uh, chamfer top. And we're just going to do a contouring operation around this with a um, chamfer tool. So we're going to solid mill turn, go to contouring, open up a save process I have on that. Um, do, 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 do. Let me find it. Chamfer on OD holes with chamfer mill. Well, that makes sense. Okay. So let's make sure I've got yep my little tiny 16 spot drill. These are pretty small holes, and we should be good to go with that. Oh, okay, so there's my milling operation. Now the last part I did this on must have been a fairly uh, a little larger part, so my entry move here is a little bigger than what I want. So let's go in and change that clearance. Let's make that about 80 foul. So now we're not feeding in quite so far into our part. Okay, let's um, go back to our list of operations and select just these four operations. And let's go to a save view, view that I have for my simulation. Okay, and let's actually watch these operations. Let's uh, rotate this around just a little bit more. There we go. So there's my spiral mill, putting a little flat on the part, change tools, our spot drill, our drill, and our chamfer. Now notice, if we look at the properties and simulation properties, as this is running, we're moving in the X, Y, and Z, right? This is a, a 3D operation put on the outside of this chamfer so that our chamfer is a consistent size throughout uh, the change in this OD radius. Okay, now I need 
four of these holes, correct? Yes, four holes. So I'm going to take all three, four of these operations. This one, two, three, four operations, and we're going to rotate these around. We need three copies through 360 degrees, and we're going to rotate around the center axis. Okay, so now you can see it's going to put those all in the same order. So it's going to run each operation or each hole complete, but we want to group these operations together. So I'm just going to simply select the three additional spiral mill operations and put them together. Then we've got the, the cross spot drilling, so we'll grab the three copies and put those with the first one. And then we have the actual hole drill itself, and then that leaves the um, the chamfer operation on top. Okay, so that's everything's pretty well done for the main turning or the main spindle work at this point. We need to cut off our part. And actually, before we cut off our part, we actually need to come pick it up with a sub-spindle. So we'll go back up here to lathe work. We're going to do a pickup operation. And I could open up a saved process for that. Um, pick up with sub-spindle. And click OK. So we now have on head 2, we have the sub-spindle coming up. We need a weight coat. Okay? We want to pick up after we've done... Um, the last operation here. So in a spree to put in a weight code, one of the simplest ways to do it is just simply drag and drop. And I now have a weight code. Okay. Then after the pickup, we're going to cut off. So we'll select the um, cutoff feature here and go to create a cutoff operation. Okay. And again, open up a process here if I want. I've got uh, settings here that are already just what I need from the last time I did a cutoff operation. And we'll select OK, and there's a cutoff. So we need another wait code here. After the pickup, we need to wait before we cut it off. And I actually want to move this sync code down here so that I'm actually moving my cutoff tool into position before I pick up. And then another wait code, and then we'll cut off. So then now our part is all in the subspindle after we've cut off. So now we can do our subspindle work. So let's select this um, back face feature here. And we're going to go to contrain. And let's open up um, back face operation. Now, I don't have a specific back face operation for subspindle save. So I'm just going to select my... Um, face turn operation for the main spindle and we're going to change what we need to so we're going to do the rename the feature oh, back face turn I'm going to pick the uh, the tool for doing the, the work in the subspindle and then we tell a spree that we're in the subspindle and we're programming in head 2 and that's all we need to do in a spree to tell um, a spree that we're doing work in, in the subspindle. No need to redraw another part or put anything on another layer. I'm working right here on the same location. Okay, and we're doing facing work. I don't need my start and end extension as we had on our facing for the stock because I don't have to deal with that. Um, our exit mode, let's make sure that we come off the back of the part a little bit. That's, let's make that like 875. I shouldn't have to worry about undercutting. That doesn't really matter if we have it on. If it doesn't need to do it, it won't do it. And let's check our lead in, lead out. So tangent lead in is good. And let's actually do a normal and a tangent lead out here. Okay, so there's my back turning operation. And then really, we're going to come in and we're going to do the same thing on this feature here. So if I go in and select contrain, all my settings are going to be the same as I just left them for this operation. I'm just going to change the name and click OK. So there's my back chamfer operation. Now let's move, well, let's change with the order of these operations here in a minute. I know what I'm talking about here when I get there. Um, let's look at this part. And we can see I still have a 
flat to mill on here. So since we're working in the subspindle on this particular machine, we're going to do this as a C-axis rotary operation. So what I will do is we're first going to put a work plane on this back face. Okay? If I temporarily turn on my work plane, as you can see I have a work plane right on this back face to orient direction of my, my tool for my operation. So let's create a feature on this edge right here. Okay, and let's turn off that work plane. We don't really need to see it anymore at this point. So you can see I've created a um, another profile chain right here, and we can rename this, call it um, Mill Flat. And since this is going to be a rotary face contouring operation, I have Mill Rotary Face on the sub spindle. And that tool should be looking for, and it should be all set to go. So now, if we go to our list of operations, you can see the last operation that I just created here on head two is this rotary milling operation. I'm going to change these lead ins a little bit. So let's go into our links and let's make that distance and those radiuses a little smaller. Uh, that's a little better. Okay, now if we look at our operations list, notice that while I'm doing the cutoff, I I have this backside work running at the same time. But really, being a Swiss lathe, I want all this stuff working in the sub spindle while the main spindle is is working. So I'm just going to take these and drag them up here. Okay. You see, you get the little red dot here all my stock automation. Again, if you want to learn about stock automation, there's plenty of other videos on YouTube, and I'll be making more covering some of this stuff. Okay, But my stock automation is getting updated, because the spree knows this is a Swiss machine, and to do sub-spindle work, I first have to release the part, either eject it or drop it into the parts catcher, before I can actually do any of this backside work. So we're going to program a part eject cycle. We're going to create a, um, a, a part release. I can call it uh, a release or eject or whatever. We're going to drop our part into our part chute and I just click OK. So there's my part release. Let's move that up here in the order of the operations immediately after the, um, the milling on the sub spindle. And if I rebuild, let's select all the operations here in head 2 and rebuild these. Okay, the spree will go in and now recognize the uh, stock automation. What that does for us is when we start our simulation, we have our stock in the subspindle just as it would be running in the machine. So we can actually see all the subspindle work being done at the same time as the main spindle work. And that's really all there is to programming this part in the spree. I'm done unless I see some uh, collision or something in my simulation here. Um, let's take a couple of quick views with my uh, saved views here. Um, I know we've already simulated these so let's check our clearances between these operations as it rotates. Yeah, we'll speed up a little bit here. Okay, so clearances look good between all these operations. Pick up. Let's run through that pick up and cut off again. What I'm going to do is select just these last operations here. See, we've already dropped off the part. And then pick up and cut off looks good. Let's run that one more again. Slow that down a little bit. Pick up, pull out, cut off. Okay, looks good. At this point, all we need to do is generate our code. To do that, we come up to Common Machining and we select NC code. Well, we get it at F9, which is the function key. We just select our icon. And here's our code. So let's look at this side by side here. So we can see our main program, you know, tools listed at front, uh, part length set, offsets set. Um, 
few comments here. We can see our uh, bar prep routine and facing, and then we get into the facing of the part, the groove OD, drilling the center, then all the spiral milling, spot drilling, cross drilling, and chamfering operations here, and then into the cutoff. Now, let's take a look at this compared to our operations list here. Then we can look at this subprogram. See, everything's block deleted to do finished last part um, operations. So there's our back turning, our, uh, our C axis turning for the mill flat, uh, part release, and the pickup. And check our uh, sync codes here. We have 40 and 41 looks good. Got our M82. Looks great. So our code is ready to go. Now, let's send some documentation to the guys on the shop floor. So let's turn off our features here and zoom up a little bit on our part. And we're going to go and create uh, an Excel report. And I have a saved template for Excel reports for Swiss work. Okay, so let's look at a quick overview on what we've got and what we're outputting here what we're outputting in the operations list, what information we're seeing in the tooling list. You know, we could put more specific instructions here, some of our options that are set. We want to output barcodes uh, for each tool and the header. Depends on how you track your jobs in the shop and uh, how we're saving this. So let's click OK and give this uh, about 30 seconds here to uh, create the Excel file for this report. Okay, now that was about 35 seconds or so, but you get the idea. So we get an overview of the part, list of our operations. Now let's go back here real quick. You see we've got a cycle time, as well as our list of all our tools, so we can make sure we get the right tools. Our process list, which matches our operations list in a spree. Work coordinates, which we probably don't really need. Setup instruction page, time charts for tools and turrets. See how much, how long each tool is being used, how much each turret's being used, how much each spindle is being used. And that's really pretty much it. That is programming a Swiss part from beginning to end with explanation of what I'm doing. I'm also will have a video up of me running through programming this part without my narration of explaining everything so you can see real life me programming this part from start to finish just as I would if a customer sent it to me and said hey could you help me program this part it's a pretty simple part um, but it's very common for Swiss machining and uh, very quick and easy to do in a spree thank you